Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And dear students, uh, you know last time we studied about the neutron activation analysis and uh, studied the, the principle of neutron activation analysis. Again, we just uh, uh, go through the principle of uh, neutron activation analysis. Uh, just uh, what, uh, what is made by neutron activation analysis when a neutron is bombarded over a target material, it gets excited and this excitation uh, uh, gives prompt gamma radiation uh, emission. So these uh, the MR radiation that is known as prompt MR radiation are used for the determination of short-lived radionuclides uh, concentration as well as uh, the uh, kinds of uh, elements that is present inside the uh, sample material. And uh, this excited uh, element and this excited atom and nucleus uh, uh, goes into the excitation by the beta particle emission and this beta particle emission is uh, appeared by the degeneration of the neutron that is actually penetrated inside the nucleus and uh, due to this reason proton is found inside the nucleus this proton actually transfer when its uh, exact place inside the nucleus in order to get further stability uh, of the uh, nucleus uh, there is another emission of uh, gamma radiation appears that is called uh, known as delayed gamma radiation emission that delayed gamma radiation emission is uh, due to the thing that it, these radiation are emitted after the capturing of neutron but after the, after the degeneration of the neutron so this prompt gamma radiation and prompt gamma radiation and delayed gamma radiation both have uh, play a very important role in order to uh, measure the quantity as well as uh, uh, the kind of element inside the nucleus and so this analytical technique bases its uh, principle on the capturing of a neutron by nuclei thereby including a radioactive emission from the excited nucleus the sample is bombarded with a neutron causing the element to form radioactive isotope which emit particles for example beta particle and radiation such as gamma radiation Beta particle emission is energetically continuous uh, whereas uh, gamma ray, uh, ray emission is uh, discrete. So gamma emission uh, often uh, measured uh, preferentially through measurement of uh, beta emission is more sensitive. <coughs> so discrete means there is a particular pattern of uh, the emission of gamma radiation but uh, beta radiation continually emitted so there is no particular type of uh, spectra of beta emission beta particle so uh, all the uh, nuclear analytical uh, chemists uh, prefer to measure the gamma spectra uh, for, uh, to measure and to analyze the elemental concentration and kind the radioactive emission uh, and radioactive decay path of uh, for each element are well known and uh, using this information it is possible to study spectra of uh, this emission of the radioactive sample and determine uh, which radionuclide is their qualitative analysis and what is the concentration of uh, the element within it. So upon radiation with the neutron, radiation time uh, one or uh, uh, several half lives, uh, a thermal neutron having pointers 0 to 5 uh, electron volt to 0.5 electron volt uh, energy uh, interact with the target uh, nucleus via a non-elastic collagen causing a neutron capture uh, so atomic mass increased by one unit so the energy imported uh, to the product uh, in nucleate by the neutron is equal to kinetic energy of the neutron and other is the binding energy of the neutron in the produced nucleus so both energies actually transfer to the system of uh, 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 this should be a potential energy so it should be a potential energy of the neutron uh, in the produced nucleus. So both energies very efficiently transferred by the neutron into the uh, nucleus of an element uh, which actually uh, play key role in order to activate the process. The imparted uh, energy excites the nucleus to a higher energy level. This excited uh, state is unfavorable and uh, the compound nucleus will almost uh, Instant, instantaneously de-excited, relaxes into a more stable configuration through the emission of uh, particles and one or more characteristic prompt gamma radiation photons. So in most cases, uh, this uh, uh, more stable configuration yields a radioactive nucleus. The newly formed radioactive nucleus now decay by the emission of both beta part particle alpha, beta, neutron and proton and one or more characteristic of delayed uh, part gamma photons. So again uh, we just uh, see behind uh, 
uh, this is associated with the uh, neutron capturing process but sometime after this uh, when prone to gamma radiation emission take place the new nucleus that is formed that is also radioactive so this uh, radioactive uh, nucleus accompanied by the emission of a beta particle alpha particle or neutron like that any kind of uh, a particle may be emitted, but in this case uh, in which we are seeing that here is beta particle most conveniently emitted because uh, neutron is uh, captured by the nucleus and this nucleus uh, is uh, degenerated in order to again uh, reinstate the uh, charge to mass ratio. So in this regard when beta particle emitted proton is uh, found inside the nucleus and then proton shift from uh, its formation place to uh, its own place which associated with the emission of uh, gamma radiation that is known as delayed gamma radiation and delayed gamma radiation and prompt gamma radiation both are discrete way uh, emission is in discrete way mean there is a particular type of spectra there is no continuous way so in this regard it gave a lot of information both uh, the uh, kind of element as well as the concentration of the element okay this decay process is at a much slower rate than the initial de excitation and is uh, dependent on the unique half life of the radioactive nucleus. Prompt radiation uh, takes place very quickly, but uh, delay process is a uh, kind of uh, uh, very slow process. Sometimes it takes a lot of days and sometimes it uh, some hours and days. So, in this regard, it is a quite valuable process uh, for those which have high uh, half lives. <coughs> These unique half-lives are dependent upon the particular radioactive species and can range from fraction of a second to several years. So definitely fraction of a second are associated with the prompt gamma radiation emission and uh, to several years like the days to several years associated with the delayed uh, emission process. Once irradiated, the sample is left for a specific decay period, then placed into a detector. Uh, which, uh, as you know, uh, uh, you have seen in the video, there is uh, a person who is uh, uh, picking a material that is uh, irradiated, and that irradiated material was kept up for a particular type of a period. Uh, after that, they are uh, then picked up, and uh, after picking, uh, putting into the instrument for measuring the gamma spectra. So, uh, there is why it is uh, uh, placed in the uh, uh, without uh, any uh, further process uh, for a few days of, uh, because there is uh, due to the thermal uh, uh, bombardment of the neutron over the sample material, the sample material have high activity, a lot of radiation emitted from that sample material. So in order, if one uh, person is a uh, one uh, worker uh, uh, deal with that uh, particular type of uh, sample material which is irradiated after uh, uh, picking from the atomic reactor, so it is highly in risky and uh, may cause a harmful effect over the worker. So due to this reason, it is uh, uh, left for a particular type of period to become a cool to a particular uh, uh, activity. So in this regard, it is placed uh, un, uh, indented. Then placed into a detector uh, which will measure the uh, nuclear decay according to either the emitted particle or more commonly the emitted gamma radiations. Okay. And there is the probability of uh, a nuclear reaction uh, during neutron bombardment. So when uh, during this is a very important process uh, when uh, there is a neutron is bombarded over the uh, uh, target material. So what is the probability of a nuclear reaction? Uh, either a nuclear reaction is fast or uh, less or uh, it is uh, most convenient for the analytical processes or not. So first of all, uh, there is uh, some uh, particular type of a we will see here. Uh, probability alpha cross section area of the target is uh, represented by gamma. And then the net rate uh, are at which a target reacts to produce radioactive atoms while by uh, being bombarded on all sides where the neutron is given by. So if uh, there is a neutron is bombarded over target material from all sides, uh, so the net rate we can calculate with the help of uh, this equation. This is uh, our uh, net rate of uh, the target material that is being bombarded with the uh, uh, neutron. It depends on the change of uh, the neutron uh, in radioactivity at a particular time. So if we uh, differentiate it with uh, in a limit, uh, so that give us uh, this uh, phi and gamma minus lambda n naught. 
So if you see, uh, this is also uh, represented with this uh, uh, particular information. This is uh, this uh, term is known as rate of formation of radionuclide, rate of formation of radionuclide, and this is the rate of decay of a formed radionuclide. So this is uh, the decay process. If uh, there is a radionuclide is uh, formed, and in what way and which uh, uh, what uh, speed it actually decay into stabilized nucleus, and this is the rate of the formation of a radionuclide, and this is uh, the decay rate of uh, the radionuclide into stable nucleus. So these two terms uh, give uh, uh, nice information about uh, the ra net rate. So both actually give the net rate. If the, it is a, if, uh, let uh, I am saying you there is a hundred molecule transfer into a radionuclide and and there is ten molecule convert into the uh, uh, stable molecule. So a uh, net rate would be the ninety molecule it will be present in the form of a radioactive material. So here is a uh, this is a, a neutron flux particles per centimeter square per second. The particle bombardment. Uh, per centimeter per second is called the flux, and is the number of nuclei in the sample that is not radioactive. These are the cold one. N star is the number of radionuclides that is formed, formed by the reacting during the time t bombardment of the neutron. Gamma is the uh, sorry, sigma is the cross section area of target. So, what is the area of the target material? Greater the target material, greater would be the a uh, sensitivity. So, cross sectional area very important of a target material. So, greater the target uh, cross sectional area, greater would be the penetration of the neutron, and greater would be the sensitivity and uh, conversion of the element into the radionuclide. Uh, lambda is the decay constant, you know. So, the number of a radionuclide present at uh, the end of the irradiation is given by. This is a formula that gives you after the completion of the radiation process, you can calculate uh, uh, the uh, number of radionuclides with this uh, formula. This is a, a flux, a neutron flux. This is a sigma. This is a n number of uh, a uh, number of uh, nuclei that are you are using in order to bombard. And this is a one minus uh, e raised to power minus lambda t over lambda. So in this uh, process, you can see that because uh, this t is directly related, so greater the time, greater will be the uh, uh, if the greater the flux and greater the time required for the bombardment, so greater would be the uh, conversion of uh, uh, a uh, cold nuclei into the radioactive nuclei. So in this regard, we would be able to uh, calculate the radionuclide at a particular time of the bombardment after bombardment of a neutron. The activity of uh, a radionuclide is just like the number greater the number of radionuclide greater would be the activity. This is a very simple uh, correlation between each other. So the activity of a radionuclide produced when the bombardment is uh, stopped is given by this is uh, a this is a uh, lambda n r is equal to flux a uh, neutron flux sigma. So this actually give you this is uh, the activity relation. It gives you the activity only. Because as you know, activity is equal to a lambda uh, n star. So lambda, this lambda and this lambda just uh, cancel each other, and uh, the value of uh, this is like that. So it gives you activity uh, values. This equation shows that the activity increases as the bombardment time increases. Definitely, if your bombardment time increases, activity increases. Activity means uh, the number of radiation emitted by the uh, nuclide. If the greater the uh, number of radionuclide, greater would be the radiation will be emitted. So activity will be high. So activity means how much radiation emitted by the uh, radioactive material. If the greater radiation is emitted by the radioactive material, it would be the high activity. And if there is a, a less radioactivity is uh, liberated with the uh, emitted by the radionuclide, so activity will be very less. Typical bombardment time range from uh, one to six half a uh, uh, radi uh, radionuclide half life of the produce. So it is very important that uh, uh, if you want to uh, typical half life uh, bombardment time uh, ranges from one to six half lives. Uh, is uh, of a particular type of element uh, which actually you want to study. Uh, if uh, that, uh, if first uh, let uh, there is a technetium have a six hour half life and you want to activate the technetium. So if uh, six half life means there is a six six thirty six hours. So half six 
half life is completed after 36 hours if you are bombarded the material with uh, a 36 hour uh, means 6 half life so then it will be very highly activated so this is uh, very important in order to for uh, particular in other way you should uh, know that 6 half life at the equilibrium time between production and the and decay process of any radio nucleide so there are, uh, you know, uh, I have uh, studied and uh, give you, uh, I have given you information about there are two type of uh, uh, processes uh, of uh, neutron activation analysis. One is prompt gamma neutron activation analysis, other is delayed gamma neutron activation analysis. So neutron, uh, nuclear decay produce uh, product gamma rays or particle are measured during the neutron irradiation. Definitely, uh, when a uh, neutron is irradiated, at the same time, uh, uh, gamma radiation emitted. These are called prompt radiation because on one side uh, our nucleus is receiving uh, a neutron and other side it uh, the nucleus is liberating the gamma radiation. So such type of process is called prompt gamma radiation emission process. So it give also an important process is characterized by the short irradiated ti radiation time and short decay time. So definitely it is associated with those elements which is uh, uh, short half lives and uh, definitely uh, it is important for those which is uh, uh, have half life uh, very in few seconds and few seconds like that. Often in the order of seconds and minutes. So, uh, prompt gamma uh, neutron activation analysis is generally applied to element with extremely high neutron captured cross section in, uh, boron, cadmium, uh, samarium, and, and uranium. Elements which decay too rapidly to be measured by a uh, uh, sorry, uh, decay gamma uh, nuclear activation analysis. Okay, elements that uh, produce only stable isotopes and uh, element with weak decay gamma ray intensities. So all these uh, uh, conditions are uh, applied uh, for uh, prompt gamma radiation uh, analysis, but if you see about the delayed gamma radiation uh, neutron activation analysis, nuclear uh, decay products gamma rays or particles are measured at some time after irradiation. So it may be in hours, it may be in weeks or uh, yes. So Delayed gamma and neutron activation analysis is characterized by a long irradiation time and a long decay time. And decay gamma analysis are often performed over days, weeks or even months. Decay gamma nu uh, neutron activation analysis is applicable to the vast majority of elements that form artificially radioisotopes. Uh, this improves uh, sensitivity for long-lived uh, radionuclide as it allows short-lived radionuclide to decay effectively eliminating interferences, thus high selectivity. So uh, this uh, term is very important uh, here uh, because uh, uh, this is elimination of interferences. If we see in the prompt gamma radiation emission, uh, if there is uh, you want to uh, determine uh, an element A, how much concentration is there of uh, A element in the sample material and after uh, as you are bombarded the uh, new, uh, atom with the uh, neutron uh, at the same time uh, there is a gamma radiation emission from your element, particular type of element as well as from impurities. So at the similar time some kind of uh, interferences may be uh, possible due to this reason uh, uh, sensitivity as well as uh, your pre accurately may be compromised. But if we see about uh, the delayed gamma neutron activation analysis, a uh, number of uh, uh, impurities uh, uh, stabilize and uh, no more uh, uh, emit the radiation which can interfere into the uh, particular type of uh, uh, gamma spectra of a uh, particular element. So in this regard, as, uh, as a longer time uh, uh, obtained, after that um, very, very much number of eliminated uh, interferences may be eliminated. Why? Because uh, they have uh, stabilized and no more uh, radiation is emitted by these uh, interfering elements. So thus high selectivity obtained from this uh, element, these elements. So uh, you know as we have studied that uh, uh, there is a type of uh, neutron activation analysis. There are two type of uh, neutron acti activation analysis and we compare these two uh, uh, spectra and take a uh, processes to measure the element inside the uh, sample material. So element uh, that uh, produce stable isotope, uh, element that produce unstable isotopes. 
सो प्रॉम्प्ट गैमा रेडिएशन उन एलिमेंट्स के लिए बेस्ट है जो कि स्टेबल आइसोटोप फ्राहम करते हैं बट डिलेड एलिमेंट्स डिलेड गैमा रेडिएशन एनालिसिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड गुड फॉर अनस्टेबल आइसोटोप्स मेजरमेंट टेक प्लेस ड्यूरिंग इ रेडिएशन yeah because uh, when you are going to irradiate the sample material with the help of a neutron at the same time you are measuring the gamma radiation emitted by that uh, pro, uh, activated uh, nuclei but uh, measurement takes place after irradiation uh, it may take after um, weeks uh, after days after months in case of uh, prompt element uh, with weak uh, decay gamma ray intensities Is, but in case of uh, delayed flexible method of analysis there is a different kind of uh, a method of analysis you can use because there is a lot of time in order to analyze but in this uh, there is a weak decay gamma ray intensities you should have to measure at that time only no flexibility in measuring just you have to measure the gamma radiation at particular uh, time during the activation process and radiation process other is uh, applicable to elements with short half lives mm -hmm. definitely applicable to elements with short medium long half lives all kind of elements uh, could be uh, analyzed with the delayed uh, neutron activation analysis but in case only the short lived uh, half life uh, gamma uh, so element could be studied other thing is that planar detector is used a flat large collection surface area only just a flat one uh, just to in order to collect the gamma radiation emitted from the uh, radiated sample material uh, which is placed very close to the sample material uh, but in case of delayed gamma and uh, gamma neutron activation analysis it should be in your mind that uh, the sample material you have collected from the uh, atomic reactor and now placed inside the body and there is a lot of uh, option in uh, your hands in order to measure in order to analyze Uh, this uh, sample material well detector is used surrounded the sample with a large collection surface area here is a, a surface area is only one dimensional flat surface area there is no round and cylindrical form but this is in cylindrical form because uh, it is in your uh, laboratory okay these students uh, and now we are uh, 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 finish at uh, this next time we will study about uh, the detection detection system of uh, neutron activation analysis and its applications wish you all the best and office